from today's most innovative brands and observe how they empower employees, engage consumers, design products, and co-create experiences together. Welcome to the Brand Lab series from AE Marketing Group. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Walker. Welcome to a special edition of the Brand Lab series. Uh, this week we're doing a video cast live from 1871. I'm joined by Illinois Policy Institute CEO, John Tillman. John, welcome back. Great to be here, Brian. Thank you. Now, the last time we spoke, we talked a lot about marketing and public policy. This time, I'd like to change the conversation slightly and talk about leadership and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, before you uh, wore the hat that you have today, uh, you have and continue to run a lot of businesses and you've been an entrepreneur yourself. So how has that backstory prepared you for leadership and public policy? I think the, the best part of it is you have to learn to be fearless. Even though you live with fear every day, you have to let that kind of flow through you and pass through you and go forward despite all the things that you think can go wrong, all the things that people tell you will go wrong, and you have to have confidence in your vision. I think great leaders and entrepreneurs really have a deep belief in the vision they've created for which they're starting an organization. And then you have to really think through strategy and then allocation of capital to that strategy. And capital is not just money, it's most importantly talent. And I think the most important thing that happened to me in my business life, and I had ups and downs, I almost went bankrupt once. I mean, I went and saw a bankruptcy attorney uh, with my wife, the most horrific day of my life in many ways, and then walked out and said, I'm not going to do it, and we eventually dug out of that hole. Very challenging. And all of that really prepared me for the daunting challenge that is public policy in Illinois. Interesting. And when you came to uh, the Illinois Policy Institute. Uh, the organization had been around, but essentially it was kind of a reboot or a restart. What were those early days like uh, as a leader? Uh, the, you know, it's funny. I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. The early days were, uh, first of all, it was virtual. We had a you know, three employees, me and two I inherited, uh, including the original founder who was a good guy but eventually moved on to other things. And uh, we were $50,000 in debt when I started. And what I really focused on was trying to create a cultural vision of urgency to perform and picking topics that were, picking issues rather, that were timely and topical to the political discourse going on in the state. And that's how we sort of got our start. Uh, we picked an issue which was the CTA uh, tax hike uh, back in 2007, 2008, and we became expert on that. We became the only voice against it. And so we learned that, you know, this is a classic marketing, right? Find a pain point and fill it. Uh, there was a vacuum. Nobody was putting in the pro-taxpayer point of view, and that was our first issue that really got us rolling. Uh, but it was also very granular. When we opened our office, I helped assemble the desks with one of our new employees, you know, that, and that was always a legendary story back when we assembled the desk. Now we have 50-ish people, and, and uh, you know, we don't have to assemble desks anymore, which is nice. But it's, uh, it's a journey, and I think you have to, you know, when you have two or three people, the culture is very easy to control because you're there with everybody every day. You go to five to ten people, it changes a little bit, but still pretty easy. When you start getting to 25, 30, 40, 50 people, it can change very quickly. And I think one of the keys of leadership and entrepreneurship is can you make that transition, not just in terms of your business model, but your cultural model. Yeah, and I was going to ask about that because uh, we've had a number of executives on that have talked about fast-growing organizations, and, and you're another one in terms of relevancy influence the number of people as you just alluded to. Um, what are some of the challenges of running a growth organization? I think the biggest challenge, especially for the CEO and especially if they happen to be the, the founder and the, the original visionary, is learning to delegate and let go. That you know, Not everybody's going to do it the way you think it should be done. And You really have to embrace the idea that your job is to hire other people who are super talented and better at a lot of things that need to be done than you are. And that your, your primary job is to wrangle resources and give people the tools they need to be successful while being the keeper of vision, being the keeper of strategy, and, and keeping the discipline of the organization going. And you also really have to be the person that I think um, is willing to move people out. You know, that is one of the tough jobs of being the CEO, and I've always been very willing to do that, which is not pleasant, but important. Uh, you have to make sure you have the right people in the right positions all of the time, and you have to be willing to make tough changes. Yeah, I personally, I just recently had to do that, and that's a never, that's not the easy part of the CEO or the entrepreneur job that people don't it's talk always, about very much. It's always very difficult, but one should never forget it's more difficult for the person being moved out, and I think some people get a little too wrapped up in their own role in that, but it, it, it and, you know, I think that you have to do it with compassion. Uh, and then, as the CEO and kind of the face of the organization, though, you do set the tone for the culture, so, so how does John Tillman do that? 
I do it a variety of ways. Um, I, I, one of uh, a great uh, staffer that worked with me for many years, several different places, went off to be a writer, and we were replacing uh, her, and we were interviewing her replacement. And this interviewee said, "What's the culture here like?" And I said, "Well, Katie, why don't you answer that question?" And she thought for a moment. She said, "Focused, fun, and irreverent." And I thought that's pretty good. That's exactly kind of who we are, what we're about, and we are very focused. Tremendous urgency to perform. We take donor stewardship very seriously. We're a nonprofit and we feel great loyalty to our donors, and it's a privilege to be able to work in this space and spend this money to advance the cause of freedom. And so we focus on that. And, uh, but we like to have fun. Uh, we're happy warriors, and we definitely are irreverent, often politically incorrect, and uh, like to poke at the balloons and pop them whenever possible. Uh, so I'm sort of that way. That uh, does permeate uh, the, the office, I think, a little bit when I have some time. I travel a lot more than I used to. But, uh, and then the other thing we do is we have a set of guiding values, 16 values that every new employee goes over on their very first day. Uh, every new employee spends at least 90 minutes with me once a quarter. Uh, where I review all of our, our vision, our mission, our guiding principles. Uh, we have two retreats a year. I start every retreat with those guiding values and principles and go over them to make sure that we try to infuse them. And then when things bubble up, and things bubble up, you have people working together, people are human, things are going to bubble up, we always try to come back to those touchstones and explain why they're important, how the behavior has to change. Well, it's been interesting to see the growth at Illinois Policy Institute, and I've learned a lot of leadership lessons just watching you and watching your organization grow. So final question is, we, is I have uh, our first president, George Washington, behind us, uh, and we happen to be in a political presidential campaign year. Do you think uh, the political campaigns and candidates have, have forgotten the lessons of leadership? Absolutely. I think, it's a, I think what's going on in this presidential cycle on both sides of the aisle, this is not just about the right or the left, Democrats, Republicans, across the spectrum, uh, the politics of division I think is abhorrent, appalling. Uh, you know, the American miracle is that this country is the greatest melting pot ever created. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, rich or poor, black, white, brown, uh, gay or straight, tall, short, fat, skinny. If you want to work and pursue the American dream, you can do it here. And there are people on both sides of the aisle who are trying to divide us for electoral gain because that's how their voting models come together. I think it's, uh, it, it sickens me and I'm looking forward to somebody emerging on the national stage that will try to knit it back together. Yeah, I think we all are. So thank you, John. I appreciate your time today. Thank you.